Kia ora, and welcome to Baha'i On Air. I'm Raman Rehani. In today's world, the youth are receiving a lot of bad press. Crime, substance abuse, and a decreasing moral standard develop a common negative image of the youth. However, as always, there are two sides to every story. And in the case of the youth, it is often the positive side that we miss out on hearing. In this program, we will feature a documentary which looks at the active role that the youth are playing in today's world. It also examines the effect that the Baha'i Inspired Virtues Project is having on the youth, empowering them to listen to the language of the virtues, such as assertiveness and confidence, and so that they can resist the mold that many fall prey to. We hope you enjoy this program. Everyone has inside of him a piece of good news. The good news is that you don't know how great you can be, how much you can love, what you can accomplish. And Frank. How is it with all that potential, today's teenagers are so often labeled as bad news? Yeah, yeah, teenagers, um, everybody thinks that we're all bad and we're all dangerous. Like, I've been into pharmacy lots of the time and people will follow me around the store because they think I'm going to steal something. And so I just leave, I don't buy anything because it's uncomfortable and I don't want to be followed around the store. It's like ageism. It's totally like another ism. It's another prejudice that people have. They look at you different and stuff like that. You're just not like equal. I guess like just people forget about they were a teenager once too. I don't know, like when I'm walking down the street, sometimes there'll be an elderly couple and they're walking down the same side of the street as me and they'll switch sides and I'm just like, What's the story there? Like, why? I don't, I don't see it. And um, just because we're young, they, they think that we're dangerous and we do drugs and stuff like that, but we don't. <laughs> they treat us like we're different and because one, one youth has done something bad, every single youth in the world is going to do the same thing and they cannot be trusted. The Edge is a youth group for teens in grades 10 through 12. The Edge draws between 100 to 150 teens from the community. It's the only time where our youth group has ever been in the paper here uh, was when we had a big fight outside. There was a big brawl because there was some person who came along and tried to fight with us. The media came along and tried to make a big scene of that, but rarely do they come here on a regular night and say, what's positive going on here? What goes on here on a normal night? What are normal teens interested in? How are they developing? The media avidly reports cases of violence in our schools. Seldom the good news. Even our parents learn from newspapers and from one another what to expect when their beloved child becomes a dreaded teen. I remember when our children were very small and people talked about the terrible twos. And so I was a new parent thinking, oh, okay, these people know because they've been through this. But it didn't happen. Instead, what happened was this little two-year-old wonder creature began to speak. And it was so exciting. It was wonderful. It was, I think, probably the most wondrous period of my life. And so as they approached teen years, and I would hear other people saying, oh, teenagers, oh, you have daughters, oh, poor guy. I just wasn't willing to listen. So all you seem to hear about are, are the ones that are getting into trouble, and, and whether it's B&Es or violence, or that's all we seem to hear about. I think that with, with the way that I see media, or I see movies, or I see the influences on, on what kids see, just are bombarded visually with, 
I think we're giving them messages that they're scary, that we're to be scared of them, that um, they're not to be trusted, they're not to be, you step aside, you don't trust packs of them for sure. I, I think we're told to be scared of our kids nowadays. You know, I, like I have some adult friends of my, my own, if they're out for a walk or downtown or on the Galloping Goose and they see a group of five or six kids, they get nervous. They don't want to go that way, and I, you know, and, and I think, well, why? Here you're labeling them just because there's five or six of them standing there. And so a team by definition is rude, lazy, violent, stoned, sexually irresponsible. Well, I guess you get what you ask for. Some kids, I think, start to expect to feel that that's how they should behave and they will be rude to you. And, um, and if they're not treated with respect, well... If we are in a negative frame of mind about a teen, they are going to live down to that expectation. Linda Kavalin Popov is the co-founder of The Virtues Project. She gives workshops to teens, parents and teachers across Canada. And I promise you that you will learn a new language a language which can keep you in touch with the powers you have and the virtues of other people. So new language... One of the strategies of the Virtues Project words. concerns the power of language. You know, if they say to you, I'm really confused... Language can language. shape our attitudes. Language can be oh, yeah, used to create labels. Linda talks to some youth about the negative power of labels on a personal level. What I want to ask you to do is to share some kind of put down that you have heard and let me know how does it feel um if i was like sick or something or if i didn't clean the house he'd always call me worthless or if i didn't do what he wants and he'd just call me worthless and tell me that it doesn't matter how i am i should always do f stuff for him julie how did you feel when you heard that word worthless i felt that well at first i felt really mad but then I said, well, maybe I, maybe I am worthless. Maybe I got to try harder to do what he wants. The way we think about them is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I've lived in a variety of uh, foster homes. I've lived in them all my life because I don't know all my parents or many of my family. And my foster mom always used to say, you're useless and you're stupid. And she always used to say that it was my fault my parents left me when I was a baby. And it just made me feel, you know, like nobody loved me. Svea, what was the hardest thing about staying in a place where you didn't feel loved? You felt put down? Well, I don't know. I always wanted to hurt myself because I felt that I didn't need to live anymore. In school, I had to have 80% and up, and if I didn't, she used to hit me and call me stupid. You're so stupid. How come, how come you can't do any better than that? So she really shamed you for, for yeah. everything. There's lots of other families that did it to me, so I feel that I can't trust people, you know? We can do so much by changing our thoughts, changing the way we think about them and the way we hold them. We need to hold them in the light of, of something positive and expect the best from them. What virtue could she have called on in you to encourage you instead of putting you down like that? Encourage me? Yes. What um, virtue do you think she could have invited you to? I don't know. She'd help me with my determination to do better in school. Excellent, yeah and you know to help me and just to help me do my best in school instead of always saying I have to do this I have to get this grade because it makes me feel that I'm not good enough you know that's that's an excellent point she would encourage you to excellence to determination to do your best whatever that looks like and help you set goals for what you wanted to do that's not like imposing on some kind of arbitrary grade yeah. on you and saying if you fall below that then you, you should be ashamed of yourself so how would you have felt if she, instead of putting you down with that verbal abuse, she had instead used words like um, she can be say determined? That she, how do you think you would have felt? I trust that you can do it, whatever you believe in. Exactly. I care about you. I know that you, um, you can do well because I know you're a really smart person, you yes. know, instead of always putting me down because the more she puts me down, the more I feel lower about myself and I have lower self-confidence in yes. myself. If our attitude shifts, if we're not, oh, here she comes again, 
or he, here he is again, and I'm going to have to deal with him, and I'm so exhausted. If we replace that kind of thinking with, here is my child walking through the door, and I'm going to be glad to see her. I'm going to be glad to see him. And if he's hurting, I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to call forth the virtues that I know he has in him. To see we're one family, it's the human race. Every woman, every man, black, brown, and tan. It's the plan, my man, so take a stand for bricks. Yeah, you and I, T.Y., understand my man for race unity. Race unity, my man, take a stand. parent doesn't think that their child respects them, I would say, well, do you respect your child? And if you do, how do you show them that you respect them? What does that look like? Like, what do you, when they come home and sit down at the dinner table, what's the first thing you say to them? Is the first thing you say to them, you're late? Or is the first thing you say to them, how was your day? Thank you. Was your teacher back today, Katie, or is she still sick? No, she's still sick. She's still sick, well. It, it makes such a difference, the way that you, the language that you use when you talk to your children, not necessarily always making it virtues or making it something that has to be warm and fuzzy or something, but just, just caring, just even a little bit of just love, just showing them the way that you look at them, the way that you smile when they come home. It's just the little things that I think will make a child feel like they're loved. So I think that one of the things that we as parents need to be thinking about is how do we think about our children? How do we think about our teens? How do we speak about them? How do we see them? And if something isn't going right, we need not shame them. We can name the virtues that we're asking them to practice. We had always really tried to watch how we talked to the kids. You know, we never name called our kids. We never you know, used put-downs, but even so, it's hard not to use little put-downs like slow poke and, you know, it's hard not to have this Re tone and, yeah. and that's what I really like about the virtues is that, you know, instead of, you know, saying something that's denigrating, you can actually call them to a virtue that's inside them, you know, and that's the wonderful thing. And I see just in little things how empowering it is. Well, for example, with the virtue of helpfulness. Mary. Mary. If I'm asking my children to set the table, you know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, I, you know, I'm watching this show or I just want to finish this project or my computer game's just about finished and, you know, but if I say, would you please be helpful and set the table, I get a much better response. It's like, ooh, you know, magic or something, but yep. I just notice that it seems to work and, and help our kids cooperate with each other, too, so. Thank you very much. Okay, girls, it's time to eat. Come on, guys. And I think you have to be careful, too, using the virtues. You have to be very sincere with teenagers. You can't be flippant or you can't be, like the kids said, if, you're, if you sound like you're preaching at them, they get really upset. But if you just are really sincere, then that's fine, because teenagers love sincerity. They do. They appreciate it. We also like to be acknowledged for the good things. Okay, here we are, we're going to be starting off. Clarence Peterson the, gives uh, his grade 8 students a helpful boost to their self-esteem. Sometimes we'll just be looking around, I'll look and there's a kid there that's, you know, looking out into space and I know that there's something bothering them. I'll say, hey guys, put your pencils down, look at we got five more minutes, two more minutes at the end of class. Let's have a hot seat. No. You sure? I'm going to enjoy doing this, Jace. <laughs> Jace is really special to me because I've known Jace since I can remember he was in soccer. And he was one of the best goalies because Jace had big feet and, 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 and he could stop that ball. 
But the one thing I really appreciate about Jace Barr is his honesty. And it's not that, that, that Jace um, hasn't been in trouble or whatever, but he's always come to me and say, this is the way it happened. And I always believe you, Jace. I know I'm going to get the truth. The other thing I like about Jace Barr is that when he wants to do something, he's very, very determined. You're creative and honest and a fun person to be around. You're loyal and friendly and you're always happy. You're helpful, you respect everyone and you're really nice. You're nice. When, when children are not uh, doing as well as they should, we, we look at the negative instead of saying, look, at you've got these skills and you're good in these areas. And we as, as educators, I think, have to start looking at the character of the individual, Everybody. building it up uh, so that when they get out in the real world, that they'll be able to tackle it. Okay, let's give her a great big hand. Let me go, Ashley. No. You're the loyalest person I know and the best teacher I've ever had. You're really trustworthy and fun to be around and just the best teacher. You're one of the teachers that tries to make school as fun as possible. You've always got something good to say about some everybody. Fun and whenever we're doing something and it seems really hard, you always make it really easy for us. You're very funny, you're trustful of everyone, and very respectful. You're the best teacher I've ever had. I'm going to really miss you when you're gone. I think any time you can build up somebody, make them feel really good. In fact, when they were doing me, I've never been done before. And it, it's kind of embarrassing, you know, but it makes you feel really good. And, and some of the kids there have had a tough time, and you wouldn't know that. And uh, there was one boy that's had a tough time in school. So it, coming from the other kids was great, but what he said coming from him meant a lot. It would be nice to think the schools were always supportive like this. Sadly, this is not always the case. I mean, every day there was harassment, whether or not it was physical or, you know, verbal. They just uh, keep trying to tear you down and down by uh, using uh, any sort of emotional means or verbal means possible. Racism and all that, it starts out as a joke. Later it progresses into starting to really hurting people and then it starts out of the small things and then it turns into a really big issue. One of the virtues that's the most important for teens is to cultivate their assertiveness. Too often if they're lacking in confidence they become very passive and they allow other kids to push them around. They allow people to violate their sense of privacy, um, to abuse them in some way. I was picked on quite a bit for being short and most kids were like a foot, a foot and a half taller. But At 14, Aaron has had his fair share of bullying. People just don't like me. Just keep getting left out and nobody wants to hang out with me. What's that like for you? There's something wrong with me, I guess. Aaron, what's the, what's the worst part of this? Not being accepted as who I am. How would you want to be accepted? As, um, as just a person, someone that's nice. Well, what do you wish they knew about you? Who I am inside. Mm. Who do you see inside? Um, a nice, friendly, caring person. Yeah, I see your caring and your friendliness. Aaron, what do you think um, is going to help in this situation? Mm -hmm. Being maybe assertive and talking to people about it. Mm. That would take a lot of courage to be assertive. What would it look like if you were doing it? Just going up and talking to the people, asking why they don't like me. I want to acknowledge you for your courage to face something that's really hurtful, you know, and to um, go back there and reach out to these kids that aren't being very friendly. Thanks for talking to me about it. You're welcome. The answer to passivity is not aggression, it's assertiveness, which is to tell the truth about what is just, to ask for what we need, to have our own voice heard, to express our own point of view that's so unique. Wow.
did it. Done it. Seen it. Hate it. Tried it. Did it. Done it. Doing it tomorrow. Wow. wow. Tried it. Doing it. Did it. Hated it. Whoa! Heaven try it. Never savored it. Unity, the great new taste brought to you by the Baha'i Faith. Tried it. Liked it. Loved it. Relished it. Hurt not others as you yourself would find hurtful. We should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Desire for your brother that which you desire for yourself. Blessed is he who prefereth his brother before himself. In a world where religious difference causes dissent and strife, isn't it nice to know there's a place we can all be one? Being assertive means being positive and confident. It, it begins by being aware that you are a worthy person with your own special gifts. When you are assertive, you think for yourself and ask for what you need. You have the self-confidence to tell the truth about what is just. Assertiveness is different than being aggressive. And so I wanted to, to bring up the issue when you are being bullied by someone. Um, aggressive would be like if somebody came up to you and started calling you names and pushing you and then you just fight back, like start fighting them or calling them names. Then you're just going as low as they are. All right, so what would it look like if someone were bullying you and you were really passive? I would just walk away and just, I don't know, I'd probably get scared, like, I don't know, like, see if you walk away and then they're at the back of you, you don't know what they're going to do. And assertiveness would mean, you know, something like, when you do this, it makes me feel like, and then you would tell them how you feel. When we're aggressive, it's because we feel helpless and we have to call on this abuse of power. But when we're assertive, we, we stand firm and ask for what we need and tell people what our limits are. Good morning, everyone. Grade 8 band members are reminded that there is a practice today at lunch. Hello, Aaron. What is our virtue for today? Our virtue today is assertiveness. What is assertiveness? Uh, being assertive means being positive and confident, thinking for yourself and asking for what you need. Why would I do that? Without assertiveness, we would be passive, allowing others to bully us and lead us into trouble. We would have a hard time saying no. There are some situations that are already too violent, and the only thing to do is to get adult help. But in the early stages of bullying, being assertive can help prevent the buildup of aggression. Fire dancers provide the entertainment at a celebration of Peace Week, organized by the Peace Weavers, a group of Victoria teens. They talk about their views on bullying in local schools. Like school is one big social ladder, and people are fighting to get to the top of the social ladder, and anybody who's down or considered weaker are going to fall from it because they're not afraid to call you whatever they feel like it because it makes them look more powerful to the other. And I, for some reason, that's a very important thing at school. It's uh, survival of the fittest. A lot of it's just peer pressure, like, or like one person leading, then like everybody else follows. And so if one person picks on the other person, another person, and if they're like the leader of the group, then everybody else will follow even if they don't agree with it. I don't like it when people do that. Like if I made fun of somebody, it would make me feel bad. So I stand up for them. and. If they have no friends, uh, go over and eat with them or something like that. Well, you can help stand up for the people that are being bullied. It's not fair that uh, everyone should be against them. They should just be uh, one person uh, amongst the sea of uh, people that are trying to uh, break them down. Um, it's naive to think that you can change other people. The best way to go is to change yourself and not to go be like become other people. It's just um, it takes a lot to be different. I think really we're here to change ourselves so that we can go out and maybe we can't change other people but just by being ourselves and being different and being unique and making an effort to be better you know within ourselves it's going to do something I'm I don't know what <laughs> I know something good but I'm not exactly sure what
you have been through your fires and everything that has happened to you can either put you down or lift you up. It's completely a choice that we make. We have a choice to treat ourselves as if we are worthy of respect. An exercise in self-respect is to draw a shield, recognizing your own strengths and virtues. A virtue for me that is one of my strengths is compassion. Um, something that I think this, a virtue that the school has is understanding. Um, the, my joy is sports, and something I need to work on is forgiveness. And it says, I am my, I am my own shield. I am my own shield. I am assertive. I think for myself and do what I think is right. I am my own leader. When you mentioned you're going to teach us a new language, I think I'm going to remember that because sometimes I feel, you know, things that happened to me in the past, the mean things that were said to us, we start to believe that in ourselves mm -hmm. and we start to believe that they're true. And you lead your life like that you see, yeah. by thinking those things and you always put yourself down and you're not leading a, a positive life. But, but by you saying this and everything, it's showing me and I guess it's showing others too that, you know, we're not what the mean things people have said to us. We're not that. We're good yes. and we have good in us and we can give others love and stuff. When you let your own light shine, you give other people the power to shine their own light as well. Look at me, is there something in my eyes you just don't see? I want to be free from wanting to disappear and just be me. You've been watching Baha'i On Air. In this episode, we featured a documentary from Canada, which focused on how the Baha'i Inspired Virtues Project was empowering the youth to overcome many of the negative social trends that they face. Baha'is believe that virtues such as honesty, humility, respect, courtesy, among others, are spiritual tools which help us to refine the spiritual nature in all of us. If you would like more information about the Baha'i Faith, please check out our webpage at www.bahai.org.nz Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I want to be free from wanting to disappear and just be me free to live in love and not fear here I am